Hey YouTube, this is uh, me, Stealth Gaming here, and as you can tell from the um, title, this is going to be a whole new Arduino series, uh, or a whole new quadcopter Arduino series. <coughs> um, I noticed that not there are very little videos on the internet that tell you how to incorporate an Arduino into making you know, something like a quadcopter or anything of that sort, or a vehicle, or there are fragments here and there, but nothing like really shows you what you need and what you're missing. And so, I don't know. I decided to make a video like this. So, th this video is probably gonna just be all on the desktop screen. I'm not gonna have any actual footage. Oh, whoa, Windows 8 is being weird. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, this it's not gonna be any footage from real time showing the Arduinos or anything because. I can't buy the controller until like next month due to financial needs. So I'm just going to be listing out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do, how it's going to work. And I hope you guys in the description can comment and like criticize what I did and see if I got something wrong or my design is faulty or something that I need to fix. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to be telling you guys yeah, I just got Camtasia. I'm going to be telling you guys how this whole thing is going to work. So, first of all, quadcopter, you need wireless control. So, how am I going to wireless control? First thing I thought was, ooh, RF chips. I've played with those a while ago, but the problem is I can only send and receive one piece of data at a time. And I'm going to have to create a whole new method to receive more than one piece of information at a time and figure out which piece of information applies to which motor or which channel or which pin on the Arduino or which like, kind of fragment in my code because not, I'm not going to be only controlling one thing on a quadcopter. I need to control four motors. I need to get readings from gyroscopes. I might just potentially be implementing accelerometers into this thing. So this is all too much for just an RF transmitter and receiver. And by the way, when I say RF transmitter, I mean these crappy old things transmitter like five dollar transmitters you can buy off ebay or amazon or whatever you decide to buy it so <coughs> oh i just realized i'm an airplane mode that's why it's not loading anything yeah so i'm not going to be using the, R the those kind of rf transmitters and receivers now second thing that comes that one would think is bluetooth well, i could use bluetooth but it's the same situation you can only receive or send one chunk of information at a time and you're probably going to need more than one chunk of information at a time you're going to need many chunks of many informations at many given times so that is out of the option and so is the xb and a lot of uh, and a lot of the things you see online now this might seem hopeless now making a quadcopter pretty difficult well I figured out how something works and thanks to the thanks to like a well, one video that bear, that very 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 vaguely described something I now understand that making wireless control is the easiest thing in the world so you guys probably know what this is your average looking controller for something like a plane or a quadcopter or whatever expensive vehicle you might that uh, RC vehicle you might get this is your standard controller type thing you have right left forward backward on this thing right left forward backward on this thing and this does not spring down because it gives you thrust you have error corrections you have switching the thing on and off and channel indications and thingies here I have no idea what the bottom part is, but that is not going to be very, that's not going to be very needed in the future. So, this is the controller. Now, if you guys don't know this, I'll go ahead and explain it. <coughs> um, let's see, paint. Paint on it. Some of you might know how a joystick works or how this type of joystick works, but a lot of you might not. <coughs> and so I'll go ahead and explain it. So this joystick is let's let's imagine a PS3 joystick. Uh, that's 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 bad. Let's imagine a PS3 joystick. That's as good as I'm gonna get. You have right, left, and then you know what I can use 
this thing. You have right, left, and then you have up. No crap. Okay, let, let, let's let's be fancy and schmancy. No, that's 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 I want circles. You know, screw this. Uh, pencil. You have a circle. It's your controller, and then you have x-axis and y-axis, right? If I go up, then it's gonna be max. Now that's an A. So this is an X. And if I go all the way to the right, I want this to also be max. So the way this works is I'm sh I'm I'm just gonna go on a guess that you know what a potentiometer is, and if you don't, then you might want to go look on other videos. So the way this is what a joystick is, it's it's practically two potentiometers. One that tells you how far you turn this way and one that tells you how far you went that way. And what you do is you literally have a potentiometer and you go from here all the way to there. So you you go all the way there. And so this is basically your right and left movement. And the same thing goes forward and backward. So all you have to do is this is gonna be like in the Arduino I believe five eleven and this is gonna be if you're going to do analog reading this and you're giving 5 volts to the potentiometer, this is going to be half of the current, which is uh, 511, and this is going to be 1023, I believe. And so this is going to be zero. Now, if you're going to act control a quadcopter, you don't want that. You want this to be zero, to be telling you that you're not moving. <coughs> and going all the way that way is going to be negative something, and going all the way this way is going to be positive something. Same thing goes for up and down. Now, that's how a joystick works. Now it's the same exact thing here. Now let me let me zoom into that place right there. So this is not going to help. Let me go here. So you have your your right and left movement here, as you can see, and then you have your up and down movement. And so with this joystick, it's a spring back joystick, so it always spring down to the center. Now this is really easy. Because the way this joystick works, or the way those the, the the way those controllers work, is you have a receiver, you have a transmitter. This your controller is the transmitter. Now, let's say I move this right and left, just right and left, no up and down. We're ignoring ver we're, we're ignoring vertical, just considering horizontal. I use that. That will communicate to channel one, right here. And as you can see, channel one has three pins. Now, those three pins are identical to the inputs you're getting from this thing. So, if you're receiving input from this into analog, if the thing's throttled up all the way, the, or turned right all the way, you'll get one, uh, 1023. If it's turned down all the way to the left, you'll get zero. So, it's, it's almost like you're actually hooked onto the controller itself except it's wireless. So that's why I'm actually going with this type of controller instead of using the other schmancy ways to do it because it is the most logical and effective way to control the Arduino wirelessly for airborne vehicles at least. Now that is how I'm gonna control the 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 copter itself each channel is each is in a each different type of movement right left forward backward forward backward here right left here and I'm sure these things also have input values so goes with those things servo it's a servo something there's reverse and there's normal and all these yeah servo reverser oh servo reverser that's that kind of so you got all these things now. If that's going to be our communication, so now I can tell it how to turn, and I'm assuming you all know how. No, that's not what you guys want to see. I'm assuming you guys all know how we're gonna move the quadcopter, right? I'm assuming. I hope so. You're gonna have this, 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 and this. The four motors, and so to go that way. I need those two to be at a hundred percent and excuse my terrible writing and this to be at 50 let's make it five better 
50, no, yeah. 50%. What that'll do is that'll lift this side up and make the side less lifted up and have the thing go rightwards. So that's essentially how you move right. And then you have, if I want to go forward, I make this 100, this 100, and then this, no, 50, and this 50. So if I want to go that way, since I'm getting two different axes of movement separately, how do I account for that? Well, all you literally do is you average your motor speeds. So 50 plus 100 is 150. Divide that by 2, you get 75, I think. 75. And this, you get 50, 75, and 100. These, now this third type of, th this will have you go that way. And so all you do is you create a ratio for two different axes, and then you end up for like you, you basically tell how it moves in the y axis, and then you tell how to move in the x axis, and you take those two movements and um, average them out, and that gives you exactly where you need to go, 360 degrees around. So, since let's see how much time have we gone through? 11 minutes. Yeah, I have more time. Give me a second. Let me close the door so I don't annoy my house people. So that's how we're going to control the quadcopter in terms of movement. Now, one issue that started to arise from this is, don't say, is how are you going to control, how are you going to variably control the motors? You know, I could use a uh, fruit motor shield which is by the way the best shield in the market for motors you have to get this if you're going to do anything motor related and not as intensive as a quadcopter this won't work for a quadcopter you don't have enough you don't have nearly enough power coming out of this thing you get like 12 volt and half an amp and that's not going to do much for brushless motors <coughs> so you we could we're not going to use the out of motor shield because you, it's it's not powerful enough. Now, how am I going to use? I can go with the most common amplifier. There's transistors, but, oh, I misspelled it. Oops, you did not see that. But, as many of you know, transistors are not very, they're very unpredictable, I would say, I should say. It, it, it doesn't do it properly, you're going to have left a lot of error corrections in your code and making things so weird. Plus, you actually, the, the, the power you input through the middle affects the power you get from the output, the, the power you get in the output, and it just, it doesn't just amplify the input. And so that's why they're very weird. So I, I completely ignore this because I'm getting so many weird things from my transistor. I tried PNP and NPN transistors. It's They're both weird. So I'm just going to ignore those. A couple of weeks ago, I figured out what ESCs are. And I think it stands for electrical synchronous circuit something. That thing. No, it's not the EPC. Let's go. This probably has a better explanation. Let's see. What is it? No, that's it. ESC. Let's, let's go ESC uh, motor. Let's see, uh, electrical speed control. There we go, electrical speed control. Now, generally, ESC is only applied to brushless motors. And let's give it an image. Your typical looking ESC should be something like this. Mm, that's not a very good picture illustrating it. Let's get rid of motor and go to images. <laughs> So, this is your typical ESC. Now, you get those two, positive and negative, from your very, very powerful battery, which would be like 12 volts and 30 amps, or 12 volts and 10 amps, or whatever you, whatever type of motor you decide to put on there. 300 volts? Anyways, so you get your input for your, vo for your motor, the voltage, I mean, and then you get 
this and this is actually three pins you probably can't see it very well none of these image illustrated very good but these are actually three pins kind of like how a servo works you have three pins in the servo and then you get the three outputs for your brushless motor the the, the ground polarity and um, positive I believe or something like that you get your three no not the ground polarity but the, the anyways you get your three outputs for the, the, the brushless motor threat has been detected thank you Avast anyways so what how do you how does this work I, ha I had a hard time figuring out how this works so the way it works is this has nothing to do with current this the only this only goes here but in order to control this you need to power actually this is probably a better image this is your three pins from the thing Arduino from the Arduino to control it or this is the three pins you're gonna need to control it kind of like a servo so in order to control the output here from those two inputs no crap to control the output from those two inputs you're gonna need to power the circuit at first and in order to power the circuit you need to give it 5 volts and ground so 5 volts ground and then this other orange pin is gonna be how fast you want it to move so you're gonna essentially control it like it's you're talking to a servo motor you wanna give it 255 if you want it to go at max speed 0 if you want it to go at 0 speed and so on and that's gonna actually let the current pass at full capacity or zero capacity and that's what's actually kind of cool about this is they come in all sorts and forms like y'all oh look ESC if you look up ESC on Google you on Amazon I mean you should get let's see this how let's see this probably says the voltage uh, 5 volts and 20 amps look at that look at that 20 amp no 3 amps and 5 volts Tw yeah, 20 amp thingies and let's see, let's, let's this is your average one that you might get let's go down and look at its specs max current is 20 amps mm, voltage 2 to 3 s lipomaker i'm not sure oh yes uh something you get 20 amps out of this you, you can 20 amps and 5 volts no not 5 volts it doesn't say how much voltage it can how much what's the maximum voltage it's really weird 2 to 3 s lipo if you guys know what this means could 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 you please tell me that would actually yeah if you, if you know what i mean just just tell someone out there that probably knows more about this than me you can that would be really helpful if you put something in the comments I, I would appreciate that but anyways so it, it can handle a lot more current and voltage than your Adafruit motor shield because the Adafruit motor shield as I said handles 12 volts and um, half an amp at most so that's how you're gonna variably control the motor now one other problem, let's see how much time we have, 18 minutes, and I'll go to 25 minutes. One other problem you have is not just motor control, it's, you're not going to be doing this in a airless environment. Well, you have to have air in order to move. And the thing is with air is air never stays still, even if you're inside the house, because the wind from the motors is going to bounce around your room, thus causing your quadcopter whatever type of copter you're making to not be very stable now the one way to do this is through the magical six degrees of freedom um, gyros and <laughs> you, you should get something like this now you see this gyro has a Let's see. X. Now, where is that thing? Um, I believe this was it. Anyways, so what it essentially tells you is what it says it gives you is it gives you three different. It gives you three variables coming from your gyro, and then three variables coming from your accelerometer. Now the accelerometer, 
Well, actually, sorry. The gyro doesn't measure your current position. The gyro measures your uh, the the rate of change. The gyro literally measure, gives you the rate of change of your angle. And in order to figure out your degree, you're gonna have to do something like what this threat has been detected. You're gonna have to basically have <coughs> calculate how much you changed every every I believe ten milliseconds. That's how fast the Arduino loop is. Every ten milliseconds, you figure out how much you're getting out of this. You have to divide it by I I can't I don't remember what the max is and multiply it by 360 to get the degrees and then you keep adding to how much degrees you change every 10 milliseconds and you keep adding that to your um, current angle and if you want to look more into this there's this pretty good um, wiki or instruction on how to use gyros for the Arduino somewhere on this forum give it a minute to load There it is, Arduino Playground, Gyroscope. So interfacing gyro. So yeah. So that's that's how this this tells you how you're gonna this this is basically code giving you telling you your current angle. But that that you can look more into. I'll put a link to this in the description. So what I was thinking is instead of ha having if I move right it'll give more thrust to the motors. I was thinking, if I move right, if, if I move the joystick right, it'll, I'll have a certain angle associated with my movement. So if I move all the way right, that's gonna be like... Threat has been detected. Thank you again, Avast. If I move all the way to the right, that is gonna be my, let's say 40 degrees. That's gonna be my maximum, that's gonna be my threshold, at least for turning. And if I move all the way to the left, that's gonna be negative, 40 degrees so if I'm in center it's gonna be zero degrees so what I was thinking actually is having it so if I move all the way to the right it'll see okay what's the quad what's the quadcopter's current angle zero okay what do I want 40 okay if what I have is less than what I want then add one unit of thrust to the 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 given motors that would make my thing turn to the right or to the left based on what angle I'm turning in this case to the right and it'll keep looping and it'll keep adding one unit of thrust and it'll keep making me turn right 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 it'll keep make increasing my turning of right until I get the turn the, the the angle that I want and if I'm at that angle then it's gonna stay at that angle but then if wind is pushing on it turns at an angle more then my thing is going to be like wait the angle that I have is greater than the angle that I want then minus thrust from the, these motors so the thing can level back out to the thrust I want so what that'll do is that'll actually give me the current the angle or levelment that I want and so that was kind of what I'm going for so I believe I've covered everything about the quadcopter um, for, for the frame, obviously, you can just go online and be like, quad copter frame. And you can buy one of these cheap, good old, dandy frames. So, I believe I covered everything. So, that's going to probably be it for today's video. The next one I'm going to be posting will pr most likely occur within next month the 10th the 15th maybe the beginning of the next month and <coughs> by that time i will have the the um this controller and inst i will i won't be having the the the, the um escs the uh, speed controllers and what i'll do is instead of using the speed controller i'll use these on a couple of servos and I, I'll have it so if I turn right, it'll turn my server right. But then if I turn forward, it'll I'll make all like a whole pan and tilt system with this thing, just just to test the Arduino with the wireless communication and how this works, and to get the numbers out. In the next video, I will be showing you actual like I'll turn on my my 
desktop camera, or I'll actually probably use my video camera, and I'll take a picture of the Arduino, how I have it wired up, explain why I have it wired up that way, um, and then after that I'll go into the computer and show you the code associated with it and why I have that code, and tell you all the problems I went through and what you guys might want to watch out for. So I hope you enjoyed this talk through, and I know this wasn't too helpful. Actually, it was fairly helpful, but uh, for some people it might not have been. I'm just I'm in this video. I'm just going. I'm just brainstorming and going through what I believe is going to work in terms of if it, in terms of realistically, like what can you possibly get? Because it's gonna be. F pretty hard to manufacture my own controller, solder all that up, get a box for it. It's not going to be a feasible plan. This will probably be more feasible than making my own controller and making my own frame and that kind of thing. So the next video I'll probably have this controller, hook it up to a server or two and show you guys how this thing turns and how it works and tell you if you're gonna buy this specific controller because it's the cheapest I found if there's any cheaper please tell me so if you're gonna use this then which channel associated is associated to which um, uh, move which movement of the which stick movement forward backward and which one and what all the controls and the buttons do on this thing and kind of give a very very detailed background about this in, s in particular so Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a month or, yeah, in about a month.